Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today I'm with my students at Rosedale Technical College. We got one behind the camera over here you can't see right now, Rafino. We got Sean, we have Ryan, Kemp to my left, and Rafino is hiding. You'll see him here and there throughout this video. Today we're at Latours Auto and we're doing a no crank diagnosis on a Chevy truck. Uh, it is field trip day at Rosedale Technical College. So special thanks to Rosedale for letting me do this outside of the school. It's pretty cool. Let's get started. One take. Slam dunk. One take. So first thing is we did scan the car and as I'm talking here, you guys can see the fault codes in memory. We just have a couple of EVAP leak codes and nothing else in the other systems. I don't typically scan a vehicle as a first start for a no crank, but why I did was the battery terminals were loose on this car. This is history that Pete told me. Battery terminals were loose and when he tightened them up, he noticed that the anti-theft light was flashing on and off and I was concerned about an anti-theft fault. So that's why we put the scan tool on it. And the fact that I have no anti-theft codes is suggesting to us that we just have a typical starting system problem, okay? So um, I don't know anything about the vehicle as far as starter control, but I'm pretty confident it's computer controlled. And one of the things we wanna do first is to check system voltage, right? We could have a dead battery and there's some quick tests we can do there. One of them will be, let's look at the parking lights on this, not the headlights because the headlights are gonna go out when we crank it, but the parking lights, I want you guys to tell me how bright these stay whenever I crank this. So that's headlights there, right? Parking lights, can we see them? Tell me if those parking lights dim when I crank it. They stay bright? Okay. So that was, that was crank. So I'm holding it in the crank position now, trying it on and off. Um, that's just a good first step. So this would be for you guys, if you're you know helping your friend out, working in the driveway as a no crank situation, is you can just check the brightness of your, of your lights. You can actually do it with your dome light inside. Um, I used to use the headlights all the time, but a lot of today's cars, the headlights are designed to go out during a crank. So that's not a great guide to use anymore is how bright the headlights stay. Make sense though in what I'm doing? The fact that our lights stayed bright would really save me from putting a voltmeter on the battery and checking system voltage while I'm cranking it. This is not a battery problem. And the fact this has a new battery in it that the customer installed before he brought it here also suggests we don't have a battery issue, we have a starting system problem, okay? So my next step with this would be well, really there isn't a next step. It really involves what is the next easiest step. It'd be any car. What's the next easiest step when we have a starting system problem? I don't know, maybe go to the relay right here where the starting relay is. Um, that would be a good first place because of location, right? Starters underneath on the ground. I really don't wanna lay on the ground. So that would be a good first approach. If it was a starter that was up top that I could easily get to, I might go right to that starter with a simple test light. It doesn't have to be high tech all the time. And one of the, um, the pitfalls you can run into after having my class is you wanna go high tech right away because you've learned all these new procedures, but don't forget about your low tech methods, which is seriously a, a test light. Um, but I think if I have a starter relay here, that is where I'm gonna start with. All right, so I'm looking at this power distribution box. Uh, it is nice that GM at least labels this. A lot of the vehicles, they do not. And what I'm looking for is a starter relay. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing it. This says number five, ignition one. Oh, there it is, starter. So that should be, as far as the coordination of this box goes, you gotta be careful with these. Sometimes they're inverted and sometimes they're a mirror image. I've gotten burned on that, but it looks like this one right here should be my starter relay, okay? So a four pin relay most likely this is, yes. And um, there are some rules we follow with relays. So without going to a wiring diagram, what am I looking for on a basic four pin relay? That's the thought process you should have right now. Two powers and two grounds? Two powers would be the key. Not necessarily two grounds. One control ground or one controlled power feed. So we have to be careful. Remember power and ground side switching. So think about a relay and how it's designed. And you have four pins. You have a load side, which is your, your switch side. And then you have the control side, which is the coil side. We need a load side feed 
right? This is a starter. So we're gonna have a heavy power feed for the starter on the switch side. And then you're gonna have the starter on the other side of that switch. So technically, Sean, that would be a ground because it should be going through the starter solenoid, the brushes to ground, um, the housing of the starter to ground. It's not really a ground. Yeah. Um, that would be maybe your second ground. Then the control side, we would have a power or, or ground side switch circuit. So we would have a power and a ground there as well. So technically speaking, when we're, when we're just jumping into this, I wanna see two power feeds. Okay. All right, so this is called a U-Activate tool. It is made by AES Wave. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for a connector that matches first. Yeah, you guys have seen me use this for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and what the tool now does for me is it allows me to measure my control side circuit and my load side circuit. So instead of just back probing the box, putting pins down in there, spreading terminals, we don't want to do that anyway. Um, the tool allows me to do some checks. We can use a voltmeter, test light. My preference using this tool is with a test light. So let's see if we have our two power feeds. We should have one up here and we should have one down here. All right, just using a test light, checking my test light ground. And then we'll do our checks. Two power feeds, we should have a control. It's lit there. That's just lighting the LED through my test light. So it's my, that LED is a low current bulb. So when, the reason that LED is lighting when I'm touching that is my test light is taking it to ground. So this is telling me here, the fact I have power here, that this is gonna be a ground side switch circuit. So one of the things we can do right away before we even go to the control side would be, does the, or load side up here, does the control side have a ground when we're cranking? You understand what I'm saying? So this would be control side power. This would be control side ground. When I crank it, that light should light. We could do that now. We'll come back to that. I said we check our two power feeds first. Then up top, right here, nothing. Power feed right there. So the green side of this is my load side power feed. Question so far. Load side feed is good. This one then would go to the starter. That'd be my starter feed, right? When the relay would latch. So in fact, what I should be able to do with this tool, I can latch the relay myself. The tool takes the relay out of the picture. If I would hit this in the crank position, that should be cranking right now. It's not. I'm bypassing the relay. So there shouldn't be a light there. No, there should be a light. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is I'm closing the circuit like the relay would. Load side feed on the green has now has now transferred let's make sure we're seeing that the load side feed on the green pin has now transferred to the red pin right when i flip the switch so what's that suggesting to us so far yeah the relays fine would be one rafino you said bad starter i agree that's on our list so a solenoid, the starting system itself. Because if you were to put it on, you would have heard a click. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about what's probably good. One is the relay is most likely good. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is this control side ground, which we haven't tested yet, because that's the computer that would control that ground of that coil based off of your key, your anti-theft system, making sure everything's intact. I would put money, if I was a betting man, when I go in and crank this, that light's gonna light. Why is that? Because if I had a control side problem where the relay was not activating, what do you think would happen when I hit the on switch here? Start. The car would crank. Make sense? All right, so you guys tell me. I'll hit the key. Actually, could you do that for me, Rafino, so we can get a, shot, a good shot of this? Watch this light. Yep. Do it again. So how's my anti-theft system? How's my computer? How's my wiring? It's all good, right? In fact, we could put the relay in. Stay there for one second, Rafi Rafino. I just want to let everyone hear that this relay is going to click. I'll take my mic off real quick. Go ahead. Keep clicking it on and off. So really the scan tool for the rest of this, do we need it? 
So the reason I left the scan tool connected is the scan tool is gonna give me inputs. Like I can look at a crank request. So let's say the relay wasn't activated. Would we be concerned then about the ignition switch, the park neutral switch, and, and things that are involved in the starting system? The answer is yes, and that would be where the scan tool would come in. We should have data parameters that would help us. And, and again, it's not what we're chasing right now. All right, so as far as which one it would be, I don't know, theft data would probably help me as far as my starting system goes. I don't know what list, we'll scroll through these real quick. Crank request right there would be one we'd wanna look at, right? I go over and hit the key. So let's say the relay is not activating. What's it say? I'm holding it in the crank position. Yes. All right, so what, do, what does that tell you about the ignition switch? That's good. good. You guys understand how you'd break this down from there? We would want a diagram. We wanna know what all's involved on the control side of the relay, of course. We'd also want to look at our inputs for the computer. If you have an output not working, you worry about your inputs. Those are some of the things that you would do. Well, no reason to go through the rest of the inputs here, like anti-theft. Let's see if it's there. ECM VTD fail enable, so vehicle theft deterrent, this kind of stuff we'd be looking at. But again, there's no reason to do it because Relay's working. So I'm really, at this point, shutting down my scan tool feed because there's nothing else I need to record here. Right, we had the code, like the, this is irrelevant scan tool now from this point. Don't need it. We have another student who's hiding in a car. He's, in his defense though, he's actually here for makeup time. He doesn't even have to be here. Hey. <laughs> What's hey. happening? <laughs> We're just wondering what you're doing in here, man. Drinking some coffee. Okay. And to my bro. Okay. All right. About to come. I ain't want to disturb you. I know you was. Uh, well, now you're on camera. Uh, yeah. Again. Yeah. Flip spinning some other videos of mine. That's a fact. He's here on his own accord. Yeah. Makeup time. Makeup. That's time. freaking awesome that you'd come. Man, listen. Anything for dinner. Nice. With the scanner. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so where we are. Um, as uh, my friend Flip just joined us, we have a starting system issue. Let's review. We have a load side feed. This goes to the starter, flip the switch. That should be cranking the engine. It is not. We have a starting system problem. Wiring or starter. Control side power feed. I have the key off, so that light is not lit right now. That's gonna light whenever I turn the key on. And then my LED light is gonna light when I crank it. Watch it. First thing, control side power, that light's lit. Okay, crank it over, the LED light is lighting. Can you see it? Okay. So that's what you missed, Flip. Our relay's fine, our wiring's fine. We're now attacking from the relay load side here down to the starter. And that's where we're not done with this tool. This side, which goes to the starter, again, flip the switch, should be cranking and it's not, that side, if I connect to battery positive, it should be lit. Why is it lit? So I just moved my test light to battery positive. So we're clear on this. When I touch a ground, I'm just on the frame of the car, notice my light is lighting. What does that tell me? Good. It's not a ground. It's, not a ground. It's, it's a power, power feed. feed. Yeah. So when I, when I turn power on, you see that goes out now because I just sent power through the, I have power coming in this way and I'm sending power up that way. So I have 12 and 12, what's that do to the bulb makes it go out. That's essentially what happens on that circuit. What does that tell me about my wiring down to my starter? It's finding a ground, Rafino. it's not a ground. It is actually something we want to see. What this is telling me, at least initial view, is my wiring's fine down to my starter and we need a starter motor we're done. That's what that tells me. If that light wasn't lit, then we have an open circuit, which still could be the starter, but it could be a wiring problem. And so we're clear, this is not the heavy cable. This would be the S post terminal that we're dealing with, which is a pretty heavy circuit. 40 amps on initial crank, 20 amps on the hold in. This is unloaded too. So it's not a great test in that just because the light's lighting, doesn't mean we're losing voltage. We've seen some voltage drop problems on starting systems where we could have a con, basically this is telling us we have continuity down to the starter, 
we could be losing that continuity from a terminal problem that has no problem lighting the test light, but we lose it once we hit the key. So our final piece would be to do some voltage checks at the starter, but this is suggesting we have a faulty starter. This would be one where I would have no problem smacking on the starter while you have somebody holding it in the crank position. In fact, we could do that here, right? We could turn it on in the crank position here and smack on the starter. Yeah. Um, you know, you have, there's variables with hitting on things too, because if it starts to crank, you could have still had a terminal issue. Right, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, because the vibration of you hitting on it, it's a variable. And so I'd rather maybe in that, in light of that, not hit on the starter. Let's do our final checks down there. But this is looking like a faulty starter. I want to remind you guys that are watching and you guys, there's another video where I'm showing this on a Hyundai that had an open in the S post terminal down at the starter. And we were doing the same things we're doing here. The difference was when I did this step, this light wasn't lit. And so I started down at the starter and found that there was no power down there. And then I backtracked and I found that it was the terminal itself right on the S post. So I'll link that in here. When this video is done, we'll put that video in that you can watch them together. But this is learning your, learning your outputs here, learning your inputs. It would help to have a visual if I had a diagram in front of me that you guys could visualize what I'm talking about here. Uh, I could draw something real quick. That'd probably be the best way. You want me to do that or, or you guys? Draw it on Rufino's back. Draw it on Rufino's back? We'd have to <laughs> shave it first. <laughs> so we have a relay here. We have positive through the winding. This is the PCM that controls the ground. We know that now based off of the results of our tests. This was ignition positive, by the way. Then we have a, a load side positive. This would be battery positive for the load. This goes down to my, my S post on the starter. Okay, starter's grounded on the housing. There'd be another heavy cable. This would go right to the battery. The circuit we're dealing with is this one. So with the relay removed, where I'm at right now is my test light is here connected to battery positive. What that's doing is that light is finding a path this way into the S post terminal through the solenoid winding. One of the windings that's called a hold in winding goes to ground right on the housing. The other winding is the pull in winding goes through the motor itself. So there's two paths for that light to find a ground. It would be through both solenoid windings, one of them through the starter motor and then to ground. But the point being, the fact that this light is lit tells me what about the integrity of my wiring here to here? It's, it's good. The only, my only concern is this test light draws 200 milliamps. How much amperage does this circuit normally carry? When you first crank it, it'll draw about 40 amps. So in comparison, that's a huge difference. This is 0.2 of an amp, and this would be 40 amps. It's a huge difference in current. And what I'm saying, the final piece, before we say that our wiring is fine, we wanna come down here and do the same check with our test light. And what we wanna do differently is we don't wanna do this test anymore. We're gonna come down here with our test light connected to ground, and then we're gonna flip the switch so we're going to load the circuit with our tool, providing what would normally be there, and we want to make sure our light stays lit. What would that look like if we have a resistance problem is that light will go out, or it, it, it won't light at all when we flip the switch. So if you had resistance here, let's say, right? Can you understand that with the test light to battery positive here, that it would maybe have no problem with that resistor because there's no current flow to heat it up. Pixar green corrosion on the cable. It has no problem carrying 200 milliamps, but once you put 40 amps to that circuit, what's gonna happen? Your light's gonna go out, okay? If our light stays lit on the S post when we crank this, then the, then the final piece, we, we can't say good starter yet, good wiring, because now we have to come over and check this wire. Because we could have the same thing going on on the feed side. We're gonna put the test light then, move it from where it is to here, to ground, and make sure the light stays lit on both of these when I have the switch closed. 
If my light goes out here or here, we have a voltage drop. And we're loading the circuit by substituting the relay. We can crank it by the key too, but why do it? We have the tool. Okay, we don't need a voltmeter here. We can do this with a test light. That's what we're gonna do. Unfortunately, I, I now have to crawl underneath. I don't have a choice. So this is why we do voltage measurements, guys. Look how badly corroded that is. Mm -hmm. you, guys remember, you guys remember our conversation in class a few weeks ago about what part we wanna go on. Do we wanna go on the eyelet or do we wanna go on the stud first? Stud first. Stud first. The stud's gonna show me what I need to know. So we're chasing our heavy gauge circuit and the reason I went to the post is I wanted to see what the starter motor is seeing. Now the next step is I'm gonna go to the nut because we could have our problem right here. Go ahead and crank it again, Caleb. Nope, okay. And it's bad right there on the nut as well. Now I'm gonna try to go to the eyelet because we could have a problem between the eyelet and the nut. So I'm on the eyelet now. Okay, crank it. Nice, see how the eyelet stays lit? Go ahead, crank it again. Okay, so it's, it's lit on the eyelet and never shuts off. That means our voltage drop is right here, literally right here. Nice. What we wanna do is load this circuit too. So we're gonna have, I'm gonna have one of you guys hit the, um, the switch on the tool for me, okay? Um, I'll tell you when, okay? So we'll go the, S post first. I'm gonna go on, on the stud, hit the crank. So, did you hit it? Mm -hmm. My light's not lighting, so either I have a corroded stud, or the point of my test light's not making good contact, or we have an issue right off the bat, or my ground is bad on my test light. Can you wiggle my ground for me? Leave the switch in the on position. It's on. The test light was yeah. lit there. It's lit. It's not lit now. It was lit though. For I the, couldn't see it on my, yeah, I couldn't see it on my camera. You can see where I'm putting the it's test not, light. It's not lit, now it's lit, there you go. Yeah, it's just like rusty, that's a lot. Can somebody flip flip the switch off, please? And then turn, turn the switch back on? All right, so how is my S-Post circuit? I know all you guys standing next to me couldn't see that as well as we would like to have, but what I did is I went right on the post and so that tells me that my terminal is fine here. That's not a problem. We're, we're good on the post. So our terminal contact to post is good. So now we move down to the heavy cable, which is this guy. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to the post and this should be lit all the time. Turn the switch off. It's on still. Turn the switch back on. It's on still. All right, and so the fact that that's lit on the post, even though this thing is heavily corroded, we have a bad starter. Okay. Does that make sense? If I had a cable issue, if I had a stud issue, that light would be going out. So even as green and corroded as that looks, this is a faulty starter. Um, at this point, we can bang on it, but it's not necessary. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna say this, we're calling a starter. Okay, if the smack on it test doesn't work. All right, um, if this thing cranks, uh, let's be clear about safety here. I have the starting system disabled. I'm using a tool which will crank this thing regardless of it, if I'm in park or not. This isn't something you'd wanna do with a manual transmission unless you are absolutely sure you were in neutral and that uh, the parking brake was on. If this cranks when I hit it, yeah, just leave the key off. I don't want the vehicle to start. So if this cranks, um, Kemp, are you on the switch over there? Yeah. If this cranks, I want you to flip that switch off, okay? Okay. And right now the switch is on, correct? Right. So my S-Post terminal is energized. No good. Your switch is on, right? Okay, does not matter. We're done. 
Special thanks to all my students here with me. One final thing this would be, I'm speaking to you guys and speaking to them, would be when Pete does the starter, as corroded as those wires are down there, I'm gonna have him do a closer inspection on them. It might be a good idea to put a positive battery cable on this, just for how green and cruddy it was. But the point with what we just showed you guys, our issue with the starting system was not, was not from a wiring problem. Um, there actually is one final piece that I didn't show you that that could be is a block ground issue. Um, a block ground issue though, we would have a lot of lighting issues and other symptoms. So in other words, I never checked the starter ground. And, and that's like a final shot that I'm gonna show here in a second, just to be sure. But the symptoms aren't there. Uh, the starter doesn't have a ground wire. It just grounds to the block. So if the block ground was bad, we would have the same situation. The difference would be you'd have dash lights that'd be flickering, weird other symptoms, not the case for us. We're not suspecting a bad ground. We should check that. That'll be the final piece you guys will see. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. All right, my test light's still all set up. That is loaded and on. Switch is on, so we're loading the circuit. All I'm gonna do is touch on the housing of the starter. Touching on the starter housing. If this block ground was bad, that light would be lit. Can one of you guys switch my test light to battery positive for me so I can show this? It should reach over there if I hold it tight. Okay, test light's on battery positive now. You see we have a ground on the housing and that circuit is loaded. We're done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was from 2018. That was in the archives. The reason that's been sitting there so long is I wanted to have a final video uh, or clip of that thing cranking with the new starter. It happened to be my neighbor's car lives right behind me. And then he ended up selling the truck. So it got a new starter. It was fixed. Pete took care of that. And, uh, yeah, it just sat in the archives, but man, what a great video for starting system analysis on any car. So highly recommend you guys share that with your friends. One last piece, and the reason Caleb and I are filming this now mainly, is my friend Philippe Price. You heard me call him Flip in the video. He's the one that came late on his own time, wasn't even supposed to be at school that day, but he wanted to come just to be with us, that's the kind of guy he was. And over the years, I get close to some students in particular, Flip was one of them. I had a gym at the school and, and every day at lunch, I'd go in and work out and he would, he would come in with me when he was a student. His true love, guys, is music. And I'm talking about him in the past tense because Flip is no longer with us. Just recently, maybe a month ago, um, he suddenly passed away and it's been devastating to hear that news and i just wanted to dedicate this video to him and you know i i didn't anticipate him being in it when when caleb and i were going through the archives i'm like caleb let's produce this video i forgot about this one and then we were going through the footage and i'm like oh man that's flip and i i just i miss my friend and I just wanted to dedicate this video to him. Guys, please um, check out his band. It's the Bill Henry Band. I will make sure I put links in here for their social media profiles. You know, there's a lot of info on, on Flip and what he's meant to them. And um, just a great band, great friend. Music was his love. And um, I miss you, Flip. And I'll definitely see you on the other side. I also wanted to say to the rest of my students that were with me that day, you guys, that was such a great class. I remember each and every one of you, and you don't always get good classes, and you guys were, and, and so special thanks for you guys that were in, in this video with me. And I, just speaking to you guys one last time, all of you that watch me, that are learning from me, I feel the same way about you. Even though maybe we don't know each other personally, um, I consider you my students as well, and to watch you succeed, and, and do well in this field just means everything to me. Thank you for being here with me.